Hey, Rich with AOK -OK Knives. Little unboxing today. Um, I've been coming across a lot of new er Chinese knife brands lately that I just I can't help but to get a little bit excited about. I'm sorry, all you anti Chinese guys, all you uh, Chinese knife maker haters. I get it. I know I've felt that way before. I feel that way still about certain things, certain products, just things in general. I get it. So yell all you want at me and I'll take it. I just can't stop realizing how good China is doing these budget knives. They are... They're really tactical gears. Tactical gears. I've seen them on Amazon. I have thought about them. They carry some pricing that is not cheap, if you ask me. The pricing of this knife is somewhere around $36. And it feels it's heavy duty. It's 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 a really solid thick chunker, man. This is the Tactical Gears TG Orion with G10 scales, and they're contoured and milled a little bit here. They feel really good. This knife weighs 5.7 ounces. It's really heavy. The green cloth, you can't see the knife as well, so I'll get rid of that. All right, now it's got a cool G10 backspacer with the lanyard hole connected to it it has the flipper as we said the g10 nice pivot it's on bearings still a little stiff but this blade guys it's a serious blade man this thing makes you feel like you have bought something that they had to they had to take special time to work on compound grind tanto i love these grinds i mean how it, then it switches up here and goes towards the top part of the blade nice swage this swage almost not not almost it comes here nice and blocked down it's got a little down thing and then it does like this weird almost like a diamond cut like a diamond grind blade on the going to the tip from here it has like a, it's a little bit thinner here than it's thick there it's really cool i'm sure they needed a lot of extra meat of of metal to do this compound grind at the tip but wow i mean very solid knife look at that no movement whatsoever going on there. Now, with this knife, it's heavy enough to do a little bit of a drop there. You do got to push on the flipper quite a bit to get it to rock and roll. I have dabbed a little bit of oil on this thing. I'm not going to put any more on it right now. See, I, I, I hate it when knives do that. It. You know what I'm noticing also is as far as... Knife support, God, this thing is so, you could drive a, tr a triaxle truck over top of this thing and it probably won't move. Now there's no other frame bolting except for right here through this G10, one screw there. And then the rest is all going on here at the axis of the knife. That thing is, th there's an echo in there. Hello, hello. Oh. going on in there because there's nothing for the sound to bounce off of really nothing i you don't see that too often uh clips not reversible and it's not deep carry i don't care about that this blade this blade is eye-catching i like how it looks when it's um folded in even because you can see the spine of that blade doing it's 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 already starting to get funky and say something to the person that sees you with this knife. 
Now, if I was to open this in public without any more oil, just the way it is, I'm going to give it a little bit of a flip so I don't look like a complete idiot. But I don't mind looking like an idiot. It's kind of... See? See, I don't mind looking like an idiot. Yeah, I'm not getting enough grip on nothing here. Thumb studs would have been kind of cool on this. It's centered up really good, and it's beefy. It's filling up this whole this whole frame gap. This is a really cool knife. I'm, I really, this blade is reminiscent, of course, of the, the more accountable that I'm, I've got in my shopping cart right now with uh, Amazon. That's my next Mora knife is going to be the Cansable because I'm in love with these compound grinds that they put on these knives. And I'm not sure why, you know, other than looks, there's got to be a utilitarian purpose for this that really makes sense. Uh, but not for me, other than it looking cool. Sometimes you just, just, you just want to look cool. It's got orange accents in the pivot, orange G10 on the tail. Really good lockup. I mean, it's in there nice. Liner lock. I tell you, I went, I'm going to add tactical gears to in my top five Chinese, sole Chinese manufacturing knives. When I say sole, because there's a lot of knives out there that you think are American or you think are just a country that's not China. And there's a good chance most of the knives you're buying from them are Chinese made. You know, sorry, but they are. So get over it, guys. We need our government to work on that, not us. Until then, buy something that's good for your pocket, good for your hand, and good for the job. And sometimes it is these knives. You know, I'm waiting for that one jackass to come on here and say, Oh, Ace on knives, Chinese, <laughs> you know, I carry a bench made. <laughs> Screw you, dude. You know, because people can't buy, can't justify $150, $200, $300, $400 pocket knives. You know, so I say to you, don't talk on my page. Send me a private message, and I'll meet you in a field, and we'll have a knife fight. I'm okay with that. Are you okay with that? We'll knife fight over it. No sense in arguing or debating. We don't need to say a word. We'll meet in a field here in Indiana, and we'll have a good old-fashioned knife fight. And the guy who wins, he wins. The guy who loses... He has to wear a Chinese I Love China t-shirt for the rest of the year. I know I won't be wearing that shirt. So take your bench made. Take your fancy knife. Your fancy, it's not made in Chinese knife. It's not made in China knife. You know, and meet me in the field. I'll be there. And I might show up with this bad boy. So not only are you going to run your mouth... You're going to find out the hard way what it's like to get stuck by a Chinese knife. Because I tell you what, you can bring this big bad boy. I'm taking you. I'm taking you. I got, I got skills. I've got drive. I have an education. And when I say an education, a life's education, and I'll just be bringing, I won't bring these knives. I'll just be bringing this knife right here. You can bring as many as you want, anti-China boy. I don't care. Because this knife right here is a bad boy. And I'll fight for it. I'll fight for the right to carry a Chinese knife until America can make me a $30 knife this good. You're going to see a lot of Americans carrying these knives. And I've seen 
us Americans carry a lot of stupid crap made in China that we should not be carrying. But I'm not going to say it's a knife because I will stand by that. Chinese is doing something right in the knife world. And I hate saying that. You know, it's kind of like it hurts to say it. But just maybe if more people like me and you and the next guys keep saying it, the American manufacturers are going to say, all right, guys, you know, let's quit ripping off our homeland brothers and let's make them, let's make them a great budget knife. Like a great one that's stylish, that has really good materials, that has incredible action, that has really cool blades with, with different kinds of grinds. Diff I mean, come on, let's do this for these guys. Because American EDC people, American everyday carry knife people, spend a lot of money on knives. And they are loyal people. Look at all these guys that are loyal to American companies just because they're Americans. They will literally step right over this knife and walk right past this knife, not even wipe their butt with this knife, to go get themselves an American-made knife and spend 10 times more. And then, not like my buddy here who had this knife, not use it because they don't want it to... Look at this bench made. I've got two Benchmades in my shop, and this is a first. And they're not mine, guys. I know. If I ever own a Benchmade, it's going to be probably just a very practical bug out. You know? Or the Osborne. Very practical. Very, I'm not going over the top, and I'm not getting the Bedlam. Not getting this. I'm not getting that. Too expensive. Too nice. I mean, guys. Yeah, these are incredible. I get it. They're great. But this will do the job. And this is really cool. So. Let me see in the comments. How many scheduled knife fights I got now? Because I'm sure there's going to be like maybe a couple guys. And I'm, I mean, I just got one last week. And I almost lost. You know? So I'm getting old. I'm getting tired. But I'll take your appointment. And I'll meet you out in the field. And I'm going to have my tactical gears. TG Orion. Yeah. This is I think this is going to be I'm going to use this for knife fighting for the rest of the month. We got a few more days left in this month and I'm this is what I'm going to use. I'll switch up next month February to a new knife that I'll fight with and I'll tell you all about it. So So you know I've got <sighs> top in the top five Chinese manufacturers I've got so far, Sativian, Ganzo, Tactical Gears, Ethan Grow, and that's it right now. The budget manufacturers, those are my top four. I'm looking for a five. Help me find a fifth, guys, because I'm going to keep doing this until America... Sweden, Germany, Australia, all the other countries other than China start giving us better knives for better pricing. Okay? It's time. And I'm going to start the movement. Knife fight by knife fight. Let's get it on. That is a pretty good little Chinese knife.